make sure my legs don't work. <laughs> All right. Paul, squeeze in. All right. Good morning, everybody. This is Monday, June 4th, 2019. My name is Jeremy. Dennis Campos. This is Dennis. This is Paul. And these are our, our first cups of coffee. So if you watched on Thursday, I told you this was probably going to happen. Uh, I apologize for the really goofy video setup. My phone is wedged into an electronics organizer, um, miraculously staying up, not falling over. And the three of us are sitting at the edge of a bed. Danielle is behind us. <laughs> Danielle. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, we, we just woke up. We're going to get breakfast. And, of course, we're recording this early. Um, recording this on Saturday, June first. We're in Florida, we're in Tampa, St. Petersburg, technically, and today is day two of the Superfoot Joe Lewis conference. Uh, what I thought we would do, because usually people write in questions, I thought we might, you know, ask a question or two of ourselves and sure. we can answer it and just, uh, and, and just take it from there. So uh, the questions people generally ask are around martial arts and how martial arts impacts life. More than more so than anything else. So, um, when we when we think about the people who were there yesterday, because we were training with how many people? We just I say were there twenty five, uh, at least more than that. thirty between thirty and forty. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. I'm always terrible at, at those numbers. So when you when you think about the people that are there, what do you think the why is for people? You know, I mean, I can speak to my why. I know why I'm here. Right. I've got a pretty good idea why you're there, but what do you think the most common reasons are that people are coming to an event like this that's, you know, it's logistically, you've got to get here, you've got to pay, you've got, I mean, it's not, it's not inexpensive. It's not like going to your own school. Yeah. Right. What do you well, think? Yeah, a couple of things. I think one, I think what I've always found with the Joe Lowe system, with the Superfoot system is the camaraderie, mm. uh, building the brotherhood and the friendships. Um, but second, it's just the, what we'd be looking at is the, very high caliber of martial artists across uh, different spectrums, different styles. Uh, on the training floor, you're looking at guys who are all of significant rank, six, seven, eight degree, a lot of them, yeah. and they're just still students. They're looking to upgrade their skills, they're looking to learn from the absolute best. And it's not just not just the instructors that, that they're looking to learn, learn from, but it's the training partners that they encounter here. Yeah. Um, the, the best martial arts teachers are those who maintain their status as, as students. I think that's what drives uh, the group that we have here this weekend. Yeah. What do you think? Just check I out think one of the best surprises is that if people come just to train with uh, Mr. Wallace, uh, what they find is that there's so many, as Dennis said, high caliber instructors. Like we were just talking about, Danny Drain, you know, was worth the price of admission. His just first lesson session, he's teaching right. again today. But that was amazing. And then uh, yep. the new guy, Orlando Rivera, was a great class. So uh, I think. You know, people that do come in maybe just thinking that, oh, I get a couple hours of super foot, you know, they'll just be blown away with uh, other instructors. And then they're hooked. And they're hooked. Absolutely. Kind of like me, like I went to go train with super foot, and then I met Terry Dow, and uh, I've been training with him ever since, and that was, that was unexpected. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I think people are going to be pleasantly surprised with, uh, you know, how the training goes. You met somebody else that day, too. Yeah, I met you. <laughs> and been, it's been and all, now I'm here. It's been all down the hill since, But right? I should be sleeping. No, I'm scared. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's really hot out. I mean, yesterday I think topped out at like ninety five. Today's only going to be a high of eighty eight. It's supposedly already seventy seven or something. I don't something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Does your watch tell you that? No, it still has New York weather on here for some reason. Oh, it doesn't update. Oh. Yeah, my wrist doesn't tell me what temperature things are. <laughs> It'll tell me if there's a lot of sun when I get burned. This is true. All right. Uh, all right. So let's let's come up with one more for everybody. Danielle, you got any thoughts? Are you awake? Not really. <laughs> it was, oh, don't say sorry. It's, it was a long day of travel. I mean, I was up at 3 a.m. And I was on a plane at 5.20. And, you know, we get here and then we train for three hours. Yeah. And then we went and found food. I guess my question is then, like, so how's your your friends or immediate family feel about your training? Because as you said, like, it's kind of crazy. That's, that, a, that's a great question. You know, yeah. we, we, same thing with us. We, we woke up real early. You know, I had to close up my shop, which I yeah. rarely ever do. 
you know, just to, to come down. So, uh, you know, honestly, and, that's something I should probably talk about more and, and not, maybe not so much with me talking about it because I don't have, you know, I live alone. Um, the viewers know about the cat. I live with a cat. <laughs> but I don't have people who are, you know, beholden to anything that I do. I don't have children. I don't have a spouse. I don't have people who are saying, you know, no, I need more of your time. My time is, is martial arts. It's training. It's whistle kick. It's, it's all these things. Oh, and I just want to point out, you guys can see Dennis rocking the Spar Wars shirt. Representing. And then, you know, Paul still has a martial arts shirt on. It's fine. It's fine. He's, he's, got, he's got whistle kick gear. It's cool. Uh, and then this is the, the training day shirt. Um, oh, by the way, training day date has been set November 16th in Woodstock. So. And I thought it was cool you got it on uh, New Year's Eve. Uh, well, I was like, <laughs> well, I, do, was, I do it. I that, do was, it. that was just to, to set something. Yeah. Set it as late. And it was funny. I, the description was, this is not the actual date. I had like seven people message me. You're really doing it on New Year's? <laughs> I mean, actually, a New Year's Eve training would be kind of fun. Yeah, I think but, so. That would be spectacular, actually. <laughs> we can come back to that. All right. We can come back. Next year. But let's... So that, that's a, a great thing you bring up. Now, you, you know, you, you're married. You were married, about to be married again. For the last time. <laughs> Only the second. But you, you've, I mean, these are things that you guys have to deal with in your relationships. Yeah. Anybody that I've dated knows, I mean, martial arts is a huge part of my life, and if they can't handle that, it doesn't last long. So we sure. don't even get to that point. So how do you, you know, how do you, how do you deal with that? Friends, family, not. Not really knowing. You want to go first, Paul? No, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm just lucky that, uh, you know, I, I have a very understanding family that, uh, you know, supports what I do. So, I, you know, I couldn't ask for a better situation with that. So I don't know if I'm the right person because, you know, I've heard stories from other instructors uh, that, that say that, you know, they, they take a lot of guff. What, one of my know. instructors, you know, yeah, um, <laughs> sort of, you know, there, there have been times when, and I, I'm not going to name the instructor, but anybody who's trained at this school has, has likely seen this, where, you know, class ends at 8, and sometimes 8.30 rolls around, and he and I are sitting around chatting. And she'll open the door, because the, the school's attached to the house. She'll open the door. Mm -hmm. Are you coming in? You know, he's like, all right. <laughs> yep. You know. well, I've had two experiences, so my, um, I was married, and that didn't work out uh, for a variety of reasons. You know, one, certainly one of the trainings was the amount of time I mm. committed to martial arts, both running my studio and, and coming to seminars like this to train. Uh, but I was very blessed in, in having four sons in that marriage, and, and all of them are involved in martial arts. Uh, my two oldest sons are black belts, my two youngest are purple belts. Uh, my oldest son, third degree black belt, has helped me run the school uh, for years. Uh, none of them were ever forced into martial arts. They were exposed to it and, and chose to continue training. Uh, my, my, my baby was 15 now. Uh, took a, about a seven-year hiatus, mm -hmm. and, and he came back on his own. So I'm very, very blessed. It's something I'm able to share with my boys, uh, who are, you know, serve the world to me, and uh, it's very special. Uh, yes, I'm getting married this summer uh, for the second time and, and the last time, and I met uh, a wonderful young woman by the name of Sarah, who uh, is a martial artist and in complete, completely, and uh, completely uh, committed to martial arts and, and to our relationship and. She's become a huge inspiration for me. Um, as these guys know, and, and the guys here I haven't seen in a while, uh, be because of my relationship with Sarah and the inspiration that she gives me, I've, I've dropped 34 pounds in the last six months and um, in better shape than I've been in a long time and um, okay. inspired to keep doing the martial arts and keep getting better and, and stronger. So uh, there's two, two sides of that coin there. So interesting. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I split to 100, 100 people and get. Sure. Different stories. I think it's a topic that I'm gonna to have to figure out a way for for us to address because it's a it's a concern that I know a lot of people have, and it's funny in you bringing it up, I'm realizing it's not something that is discussed much on the show. Mm. So it, it probably needs to be. So, all right. So let let's do this. So first off, I want to remind everybody tomorrow is gonna to be live. You know, I'll, I'm I'm home at this point. At the point at the point you're watching this, I'm honestly home, and I'm just sleeping in because travel is gonna kick my butt. I'm gonna get home 12, 12.30 and getting up to give you a good show. You know, I saw what happened last week with losing sleep and sorry, <laughs> this is what you're getting. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, 
turn on notifications because we do this show every weekday morning, 6.30 a.m. Eastern. If you want to ask a question, drop it below, or if you're checking out the audio feed later, you can email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Now, your homework. So as you go through your day and you're looking around, you're seeing what everybody else is doing, think about the things that they're passionate about. You know you're passionate about martial arts. If you're watching this show, you're passionate about martial arts. I think that's a pretty safe assumption. But not everyone has things that they're really passionate about. So consider, you know, what do you know about Ted? What is Ted passionate about? How does Ted's passion impact his life, make him better? Maybe it doesn't. Maybe if Ted's passion is Sudoku, you know, maybe that makes him a little more focused, right? You probably know a lot about the people around you and what makes them passionate, what really gets them going when they're not at work, when they're not doing the things they have to, and just consider how it changes their life and maybe make some relation back to how martial arts changes your life. So that's all That's all from us today. We're going to go get some breakfast now, and then it's another whole day of training. So take care. Yes. All right, take care. Peace.